Hi, I'm Dan and I work at Fanatic Bike. We're known for helping people create gorgeous custom builds with some of the best mountain bike brands on the planet. We've separated all the parts of a mountain bike into six different systems, which we're gonna break down in this series. With a good understanding of how all these components come together, you'll be able to confidently configure your own dream build. So stay tuned and join us in understanding mountain bikes. Anytime you get into a new car, what's the first thing you do? You move your seat forward or backward, adjust the rear view mirrors, maybe even change the height of the steering wheel. Well, with mountain bikes, there's typically three to five sizes, small, medium, large, and if you're lucky, extra small, extra large, maybe double XL. How do you tailor the wide variety of different sized people to these three to five different frame sizes? Well, in episode two, we covered our first touch point on our bicycles, that's our pedals. But today, in episode four of Understanding Mountain Bikes, we're gonna cover the remaining two. That's our cockpit and our saddle. These two easily adjusted areas allow us to tailor the fit of our bike to our different size bodies and our different preferences. They're easy to overlook, forget about, or feel intimidated by though, which leads a lot of us to riding a bike that maybe isn't as well set up or as comfortable as it could be. In fact, all the adjustments we'll talk about today are pretty easy to do, and all you really need to do most of them is a multi-tool. So grab yours and let's check it out. We'll start up here at our cockpit, where the first component to be aware of is our stem. Now, getting a different length stem changes the distance between our hands and our bum, which comes into play when we're seated. You can also change that distance by adjusting your saddle, so don't go out and buy a new stem just yet. Most stock stems today tend to be between 40 and 50 millimeters in length. You can get them as low as 32 millimeters, like this anvil swage stem, or really, as long as you want. Now, because having a longer stem like this is gonna pull your weight further out over your front wheel, especially today with gravity-oriented bikes, stems have trended towards the shorter side of things. One easy adjustment you can make on your current stem is to change its height. This would affect how upright you feel on your bike. Now, to do this, it's just a matter of moving these headset spacers, which are these rings you see above and below your stem, changing the arrangement of them. To do this, first you're gonna loosen the two pinch bolts on the back of your stem, then remove the stem's top cap, take the stem off and any spacers, and then rearrange it however you'd like. Putting it back on, make sure you have the same total number of spacers so that you can effectively preload your headset, which you'll do by installing your top cap first, tightening it down snugly but not overly tight, then lining up your handlebar with your front tire, and then finally, evenly tightening the two pinch bolts on the back of your stem. Moving spacers above or below our stem is one way to change the height of our hands on our bike. But what if there's no more spacers to move? Well, that brings us to our second component, which is handlebars. Now, handlebars have a few different dimensions to learn about, so let's get through them. The first is rise, which is how you would change that height. Rise is simply how much higher than the center of the bar your hands sit come in a few different varieties. For example, this next SL bar, which has a very small 10 millimeter rise, to this Deity Race Point handlebar, which has a 38 mil rise, and they come even higher than this. The second measurement to be aware of on our handlebars is called sweep, and that's the degree to which the end of the handlebar sweeps back from the center at our stem. They typically come between five and nine degrees of sweep, and it's something that really amounts to personal preference. The best way to get a feel for it is to go to your local shop and just feel a few different handlebars. If you can't do that, however, which is the case oftentimes, don't stress it too much as it is something that you will get used to and doesn't make a massive difference in how things feel. The last measurement to consider on your handlebars is width. It's true that larger people with broader shoulders and a longer arm span are gonna do better with a wider bar and vice versa for smaller riders. However, there is some room for personal preference on this one. Before you go out and buy the widest bar you can or cut down your bars, consider this. Having a wider bar is gonna give you more leverage on your front wheel. So if you're charging through a rough terrain that's trying to deflect your front tire, a wider bar will make it feel more stable. However, there is a point of diminishing returns. If it's so wide that you're struggling to steer your bike effectively, 
or if you're whacking trees on the side of the trail, then that's no good for anyone. For the majority of the bell curve, most people, something around 760 millimeters, around 30 inches, is going to be pretty appropriate. That's what we've found anyways. So if you do want to cut down the bar you have, head down to your local bike shop. They can get a hacksaw on there and cut it cleanly and effectively and sand it down for you. It's pretty easy to do. If any of this information has inspired you to get a new stem or a different handlebar, do be aware that there are two different diameters of clamp here on the handlebar. There's 35, which is what I have here, and it's becoming more and more common. And then there's also a 31.8 millimeter diameter bar, which means that if you have a 31.8 stem, you're gonna need a 31.8 bar, and so on and so forth. Keep that in mind. Your handlebars are the chassis upon which your controls sit, and there's actually quite a few adjustments you can make to them to make sure they're exactly where you need them. Whether you're using Shimano's iSpec tabs or SRAM's Matchmaker tabs to mate your brake to your shifter, to simply moving your brake levers up and down, there's a lot of little things you can do to ensure that your controls are exactly where you want them and not knocking into your knuckles. Now, going through all of these is beyond the scope of this video, but there's a few quick and easy ones that I want to at least touch on. Firstly, don't be afraid to move your brake, shifter, and dropper remote towards or away from your grip so that things are exactly where you want them and not knocking into your knuckles or anything else. When you find exactly where you like it, I like to tighten mine only so that they don't move when I'm using them, but they should be able to rotate in the event of a crash. That way you're not unnecessarily breaking expensive parts. Secondly, with both SRAM and Shimano systems to attach your shifter to your brake lever, you can actually move the shifter independently of the brake. All you gotta do is loosen one bolt and then slide the shifter toward or away from your thumb so that you can reach it easily. Lastly, don't be afraid to change the order that your controls are on your handlebar. For example, if my dropper remote is too close to my thumb here, I can actually slide everything off, then put my dropper remote on first, and then my brake, so that it sits further away. You can frequently do that, especially with mismatched brakes and shifters, where you're not using this matchmaker or iSpec system. Most mountain bike brakes have a number of adjustments that you can make that change how far away from your handlebar the lever sits or where in that throw it makes contact with the rotor. The next episode in this series, episode five, covers hydraulic disc brakes in depth. So if you wanna check that out, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification box so you can check that out. If you want more information on how to set up your handlebar and the differences in brake height and stuff like that, I also have a pretty in-depth blog post about that, which I'll link to up there so you can check that out. For now, we'll move on to the last touch point we have with our bike, which is our saddle. There's a massive number of different saddles out there. Sometimes the differences can be pretty obvious, and sometimes they can be pretty nuanced. But regardless, the best way to find a saddle that works well for you is to try different ones out. Instead of talking about all the different types of saddles out there, today I just want to cover three things. How to find what height your saddle should be at, how to consistently measure that height so you can move it from different bike to bike, and lastly, a few different adjustments you can make on your current saddle, both forward and backward, and also the angle. Determining the right saddle height for your bike is actually pretty easy. Set yourself up on your bike next to a wall or a table like I have here, and then fully extend your dropper post. Drop your foot to the furthest point away from you in the pedal rotation, which is gonna be sort of on axis with your seat post. Your leg at this point should be at almost full extension, but your knee should not be locked, and you should have a slight extension at your ankle. This is gonna be your correct saddle height. Measuring your saddle height is a question that comes up a lot for us because we ask it of you in our custom bike builder. It helps us make sure that this saddle or seat post that you've selected is gonna fit for your saddle height. Now, it's also something that's important for you to know because it allows you to have a consistent measurement that you can take from bike to bike and get your saddle exactly where you need it. To do this, we're gonna to wanna to measure from the top of the saddle instead of from the rails because different saddles actually have different heights. So we'll put our pedal down at the furthest point in its rotation, which is usually in line with that seat tube and measure to the top of our saddle 
For me, I have about an 88 centimeter or 34 and 3 quarter saddle height. The last thing we're going to talk about today is the adjustments that you can make to your saddle here in the saddle clamp here on your seat post. Simply by loosening these bolts and then tightening them differently, we can move our saddle forward or backward in these rails, again changing the distance between our bum and our hand and feeling more or less stretched out. Or we can actually change the angle that our saddle sits at. So if we're encountering a weird pressure point or discomfort on our saddle, get your tool out and change that angle and see if you can alleviate that. Well y'all, that covers the last two touch points on our bicycle, our cockpit and our saddle. With the information we covered today, you should be able to make any adjustments you need to make your bike fit you better and feel more comfortable as you ride it. Tune in next week, we're gonna be covering one of the most intimidating parts of today's mountain bikes, which is hydraulic disc brakes. So if you wanna catch that, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on that little notifications box. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, definitely let us know in the comments below. You can always shoot us an email or give us a phone call at 844-FANATIC. And until next week, thanks for watching.